My name is Ramsey, and welcome back to Against the Storm. We are continuing here on our first real encampment. Uh, we're making some decent progress towards our three remaining blueprint rewards. We have one blueprint reward yet to collect for either Smokehouse, Clothier, or Weaver. Weaver giving us access to fabric, Clothier giving us access to coats to make with the fabric that the Weaver would give us access to. But we can only have access to one of the two at the time. And then the Smokehouse giving us the ability to jerk meat. The Weaver in particular upgrades our fabric production from just the crude workshop up to fabric three star? That's so much more efficient. Mm. And it's worth noting that humans and beavers alike do really like clothing. That said, I don't really have a way to make coats yet, so even if I got really, really good fabric production, if I can't make any coats with it, how's it really helping me? We only have one of our three that need education, that being in the beavers. Hmm. Okay. I think we still need to hold off on this, but I think ultimately it's most likely we take the Weaver. Actually, should I just take it immediately? Brawling goods aren't good for anyone except for just the lizards by themselves as well, and it's really the beaver's resolve that I want to get as high as possible. We're not very good at food production, unfortunately, which is one of the ways we could otherwise fulfill that. I almost feel like I want to kind of just push along until we can find another blueprint in tandem. You know what? The deciding factor here is actually how much plant fiber can I afford to give? Because if I can use enough plant fiber to actually just use the inefficient translation into fabric from the crude workshop, Maybe I can hold off on getting better fabric production for a while and afford to take the Clothier in order to start getting more resolve on the humans and the beavers. And in fact, that's what I'm going to commit to here. Took me a little bit of time to come around to it, sure, but I'm, I'm here eventually. Get the crude workshop starved. And the limit for fabric in storage at any one period of time? Let's make that 15... And yes, you're still capable of taking leather because I don't have a ranch, so there's no reason for me to use it otherwise. And yes, you can also use plant fiber. Cool. Lizard's resolve will only need to be two higher before a five pack of provisions would be really helpful here. So I should probably also start moving towards that. This is giving us Amber back for finishing that cache over there. Cool. Obel's camp has no deposits nearby, so we'll just move this over to the next available deposits. Oh, that's a dense deposit up there. Actually, hang on. Let's have a look at this distance. Could I get a third half down here? Yes. Yes, but I'm going to need a woodcutter to cut down some of the area first. Okay, fine. Let's restaff this woodcutter. So if I can start planning where the hearth is going to be, and it cannot overlap the previous one, obviously can't overlap with anything that's already occupied as well. Like right there seems like the best position for it. Or maybe even there. Actually, I, d I do like this position slightly better. So that's where I know that's going to be. Then I know that I can put the warehouse here. And then the warehouse will be near enough to make sure that the uh, herbalists don't have to run way too far. And so that the woodcutters don't have to run way too far, making them far more efficient so that I can actually clear out this area quickly. The woodcutter's camp is also going to be moved eventually, so 
I can put that in a slightly inefficient position to start with here. And all of these paths can also be changed in the future. Uh, let's it go all the way through there. Obviously, I would like to make this a farm field at some point, but I'm going to need to cut a wider berth down to this extra area before I can do that. This is another unstaffed woodcutter's camp? What am I up to? Did I decide to stop expanding at some point? I need the terrain right now. I'm just going to put that basically in the previous position to try and open that berth. In fact, I'll even mark the trees that I want cut. There we go. Ugh, Beavis Resolve is going down, but I can't expect anything else in Storm. Storm is currently active, so the negative four to Global Resolve from Looming Darkness is definitely going. Pretty much everyone's having some tough times with that. Two stacks of Looming Darkness for everyone? Yeah, two stacks of Looming Darkness. Oof. Oof is big oof times. Oh, the coat production is efficient. One piece of fabric makes ten coats. I do, I do, I do absolutely although we have a lot of cloak consumers as well we've got 25 between our beavers and humans so i'll get some more humans active to try and make more coats more quickly i mean i am looking to increase both the beaver and humans resolve right because i've got a human resolve and a beaver resolve i mean i've also got a lizard resolve quest so basically any resolve is actually fine for me never mind I should also fulfill the need for education. I'm almost leaning towards making some scrolls here. We've got some pigmentation. We've got some leather, but I'll make that out of plant fiber. Oh, I can make that out of wood. Oh my god, we're running out of wood. What's using all of our wood right now? Uh, Honestly, I would probably expect... Oh, I need some more planks as well. Yeah, I'm not making, like, an unlimited amount of planks or anything like that. Not making an unlimited amount of simple tools. Although I probably don't need to continue pushing my tools right now. Eh, actually, I should. I should. I really want to have at least... Let's set the tools to 16. So that I can solve even the worst possible thing that I should come across. So two planks is equivalent to 10 wood. So yeah, I want to put wood in this rather than planks. Hidden reward. Gain one ancient tablet for every two completed glade events. The bonus is added retroactively. Yes, please. How many did I get for that? Three, it looks like. I just felt that I had done a decent amount of those and that would probably be relevant for me. Uh, here, let's get some herbs. Excellent. Okay, let's also... Yeah, we've got more than enough bricks for the moment. We don't need any more crystallized dew, and we don't even have the production facility for it. Let's take both of you out of the brickyard, although I will leave the brickyard to be able to create it later. I don't technically need to, to be clear. I could just put that away, but... Uh, I want to keep it for the moment, please. I'm going to move this plantation over to make space for a reed field next to it. I don't think I need to get another rain collector here. We're not heavily reliant upon it. Okay, it looks like this herbalist camp is also going to clear out relatively soon this final herb node, and I'll have to move it again. More than ready to do so, though. Let's actually also task these woodcutters with clearing the specific area that I need in order to put down the a uh, small hearth up in this area. Also, we're now collecting a decent amount of berries. That's something that I don't think we've had a huge amount of access to before, so maybe I should check whether or not this makes a more efficient process for... Where is my bakery? Oh, I'm making limitless coal. That's the problem here. I, I was wondering if this was what was draining all of my stuff, actually. Specific. Okay, uh, I'm going to say maximum. I can have 30 coal at any one time. I only need one of you to maintain that limit. Uh, so one of you will stop. Well, actually, I don't need either of you in there at the moment. But that's what was draining all of my wood. Although, that 
that explains itself as well, because if all of my wood was draining, but I wasn't getting coal in exchange for it, I would be running out of fuel. So the fact that I didn't get a message saying you're running out of fuel tells me, yeah, you're only using coal at this point. I just needed to set a limit for it. That's literally it. That's okay. Oh, this is going to be so much easier now that I figured that out. So limit's 30, 78. Yeah, we don't even burn it that quickly. We'll be able to burn through a couple of our resolves. Restore of it, rather. Uh, pack of provisions. Looks like we've got people in the crude workstation. Are not capable of making any more fabric. Take each of you out of there. Do I have a makeshift post here? Looks like I do, but it's more efficient. I love this recipe screen. It's more efficient if I use a provisioner instead, so I will build my provisioner. This is a three by two. Yeah, I mean, that seems fine. As far as positioning goes. And then if I move this up and rotate it, take that part out and extend some paths. Oh, wait a second. That's two paths over. Oops. I thought I'd only put one space behind it, meaning I screwed this entire thing up from the very get-go. Dang. We've got it. Okay, revision here goes. There we go. One over. And then I guess everything could have stayed with its initial positioning. Oh well. Okay. Extend that path. That one there, that one there, that one there. That's not really going to be there for that long, but... The rest of that infrastructure will be important should I decide to go down and build towards the sea marrow deposit. Not an immediate goal of mine, but if I can set myself up comfortably for it without harming anything, I feel there's a good reason to do so. Stone Cutter's camp has no deposits nearby. We can now move this to a big old stone here if I want it. Um, would they actually be able to access that? I'm interested. Yep, they have absolutely no problem whatsoever walking through the copper vein. Neat. Obelisk camp now needs to be moved again. It will... Ooh. Do I want to... want to double team this berry bush? So that would be four people working on it at the same time. They are large. But am I using the berries for anything at the moment? I've got 99 of them in storage. Do I have any recipe that even requires them? Ingredient. Show me berries. I can make provisions with berries. That's it. I actually don't even want that many berries. I'm going to destroy the second herbalist camp. And I guess the infrastructure that was used to support it. And not really too much of a problem to do that, to be fair. Ooh, also, we've got the hearth out here that just needs four decorations in order to become a hub. So, let's get you a couple bad boys there. I'm just gonna give a little bit of separation from the warehouse here. That ought to do. Paved road, put a little of that down. All right, now let's check on our new location for our new half. I believe there was where I... There? No, there. Right right where it's currently hovering. That's exactly where I wanted to put it. It's just I need to destroy this path, and then I need to move the woodcutter's camp, and then we'll have access. Obviously, it's time to start building the traditional paved road around it. Human house. I mean, I have a lot of unhoused humans at the moment. I do not have many planks. I got a carpenter working full time. Well, I, I can stock another one of you in here. 
I'm gonna carpet the wagon full time on make these planks. Guess I don't have that much wood. Yeah, I'm still recovering, I guess, from the, the earlier coal mishap. I mean, guess that makes sense. Let's get back to hyperspeed. I feel like I'm gonna pop three of these missions at the exact same time because everyone's resolve is gonna raise basically parallel. Uh, is every half sander at the moment a lizard? Yes, indeed they are. Good to see. Hmm. One of my primary problems is still that, that like not everyone has a house. That's like very very glaring issue here. Um, I mean, yeah, I can make a little, little hub here. And we've got this one set up here as well. So what, I'm adding the ability to take eight? No, 12 new humans? Taking up our capacity for humans to 16. So that should redistribute some of the housing that the humans were otherwise occupying to the other characters here as well. Although it is gonna continue to require a lot more investment of blanks for us. Officer's camp has lost run of anything for it, and in fact, there is nothing left for the Harvester's Camp to take. Beautiful. Hmm. A Scavenger's Camp, however. Could get us some eggs. Do I care about eggs? I'm either not using eggs at all, or I have run out of eggs because I use eggs so much, and I'm not entirely certain which. Uh... Did my previous production go down? The, ooh, scrolls. Scrolls still not being made? How dare. There we are, the provision up. Just need to check on this because this is where I intend to make the provisions for, oh wow, Beaver Resolve is, is high enough to complete one of the missions at the moment, neat. I'm gonna turn off herbs because herbs can be used to create other things here for us, but only berries for the packs of provisions and I will tell you that you can make a maximum of five. Oh, humans and humans resolve is going off at the same time as well. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Plus 15% to wood camp production speed. Also 30 biscuits. These are gonna raise the morale around the camp, certainly. Uh, 10 simple tools, three humans, 10 parts and 35 flower. A leather worker, a weaver, and a smokehouse. I am running out of plant fiber by using the inefficient process for making fabric. I could resolve that with a weaver. Ugh. I'll tell you, what I really want is the ability to make ale and serve it, but there's so many things in that tree I would still need. Water skins and fabric would take care of two of them. But I would still need a tavern in order to serve it, and I would still need the ability to actually make the ale itself. I've only got two more blueprints left. I don't suspect I'm going to find that that easily. I suspect I should just take the weaver here and get fabric. And so I will. Okay. I mean, I can just pop it down up here in a very normal space. Neat. Uh, ooh, we still need to put down at least two more homes. Wait, how many human homes do we have at the moment? 11. It's capacity for 22 of them. Okay, yeah, so we're actually fine on human homes. We just need to put down two more other homes. 
Uh, and if we do it up here, we can actually make this a sheltered area as well. So one goes there. This should probably move. Yeah, sure, let's put you all the way up there, because then I can make one shelter directly next to you and justify the path running up. Oh, final two orders. Ooh, a pack of provisions. Fifteen, we can make those very easily. 150 wood, we can provide that very easily. Ancient tablet. Four of those in order to get grubbing tools. Find 15 roots every time you discover a new glade, as well as 50... Sorry, five newcomers. Oops. Uh, and 40 skewers. The other is fulfill pickled goods, skewers, and jerky 50 times each. I'm not going to do that. Production chains would just be wild. Don't have to support that. Uh... I mean, I'm just going to quickly check if I do have the... Nope, I don't have enough ancient tablets yet. But I'll get another one very soon. So I'll take it. Ooh. I do have 20-ish people. And this would give me 25 amber, it would give me 40 stone, and it would give me one rain-powered pottery wheel. Plus one to pottery production. I don't really want any pottery production, though. Discovering a glade gives a three, uh, plus three boost to global resolve for 1.5 minutes, and it stacks in durations. Also extra grain production. But I'm using plantations at the moment, so I'm not really actually producing grain that much. Hmm. Pottery delivery line is interesting, but is also very expensive considering how many glades it needs me to cut into. I want to take the human majority, the one that I can immediately complete. And I'm also going to order this woodcutter to cut your way into a dangerous glade, and then another dangerous glade. I got a lot of humans standing around who can certainly help out with something out there. Who'd leap at the opportunity to do something like that. Getting very close to our next blueprint. Dandalizingly close. Good lord, what's going on in here? This is the most dense area I've seen? Okay, a provisioner that I would have the ability to rebuild or loot. There's also a large encampment, which I could welcome people in or loot. There's a... Herbalist camp, which I could rebuild or loot. There's a plantation. Oh, I could rebuild or loot this. And then there's also Fishman Cave. The goods that you require, excellent. I can pay them off with coal. Although I'm probably, probably better utilize the simple tools here. Working effect is trying to enter the Fishman Cave triggers hidden traps. A Fishman Totem will spawn every 60 seconds, and that is only active while it's being worked on. So I'll send two folk to work on it, so three of these will spawn while it's being worked on here. Uh, I'm going to send to the cap uh, send to the capital, Citadel rather, to get Queen's Grace here. I'm needing additional ways to get some dense grace. I feel like these events are probably going to be really, really effective ways of doing that right now. I'm actually going to try and do, like, all of this at once, I think. I guess I could rebuild the plantation. But if we salvaged it and then built a plantation, we're getting effectively, you know, 25 berries and 25 plant fiber for two planks an additional time. But I don't even need anything that the plantation makes yet trashing that. Then let's... Should I welcome some new people or send to the Citadel? I think it's just welcome new people here. With our ridiculous amount of berries to entice them. Yes. Huh. And provisioner as well, yeah. Ah. <sighs> A 
dangerous glade indeed. Absolutely chock full of goodies. That I <laughs> salvage and move on. Ah, uh, here we go. That's more like it. Forgotten Temple of the Sun. Who would worship the sun in a world with so little sunlight? The temple demands offerings, destroys all trade goods in the warehouse. Packs of goods, amber, and ancient tablets. Well, I'm going to send some simple tools and a couple of workers to try and take this bad boy out. We can send to the Citadel, or we could get ancient tablets as well as copper bars. I think I'm getting... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting ancient tablets for the completion of Glade events, so I don't need to actually take the ancient tablets option here, so I will again take Queen's Grace. Extraction tools. It's a bit of... Ooh, a set of special tools made to extract artifacts for every two completed dangerous and forbidden glade events. Happy to take that. Let's also get some new people in the camp, and I'm going to take the additional meat stuffs. Fishman Totem has appeared nearby. I should assign a worker to this to take it out. Otherwise, it is increasing the hostility of the forest by 30 points while it's active. Another herbalist camp over here, and... That too will get salvaged, this time for a bundle of coats. Neat. Ooh, wait, I might have exactly, yeah, I have exactly 10 simple tools. 10 simple tools for opening my medium abandoned cache. We can send to the Citadel with the finish there as well. We, we currently have so much reputation on backlog, just waiting to pop. What's been happening with all of our production lines while we've been looking elsewhere? Deeper into the wilds is completed. Got enough of the provisions. Obviously, I guess we don't need the provisioner anymore. Rainmill, Leatherworker, and Bakeri. So I think I've... Yeah, I, th I think I've now just exhausted all of the biscuits that I had. I think I got that from one of my bonuses. So I think the ability to actually produce the biscuits ourselves is probably a good idea here. And I can make pie. I got a lot of berries. Let's make a bakery. It's my low rent version of let's build a zoo. It's much more realistic and smells infinitely better. Come on, bakery sit there, thank you. Shman Totem, I see. I'll immediately assign my best villager on the task. One of the reasons I want to salvage this entire area as well is because it kind of just clears it out for me. Got a bunch more space if I want to utilize that for anything. As we're completing each of these as well, you might notice we're also lowering the impatience. One of the reasons that I mentioned earlier that you can often bring back the game even from a point that looks like it is beyond the most dire circumstance you could possibly comprehend. Beaver house. Well, I mean, that's what I need, right? More beavers resolve, they need to be beaver housed. Okay. I mean, I kind of want... Again, I need some some clear runway to pop these houses down. Hmm. I'll just fit them in where I can for the moment, I think. As I don't suspect we'll have long to celebrate their placement if we do it correctly. That's an additional heck of a load. That'll do, I think. It's gonna cost a hell of a lot of planks, but we've, we've got them on backlog. We do not have them on backlog. Man, our wood production is still garbage. I mean, realistically, I probably don't need to do this at this point, but I would like to have a plantation there just to make it look neat. That's one of the worst reasons, probably, to do something in this game at this point, just to make it look neat. But I do! Like, a lot of my things are based around trying to make things look neat. I mean, look at this town! Look at this town! It's... 
This makes me happy to look at. This, offset by one, necessitated by the, con uh, the converted rain totem not being able to be moved. This makes my soul sad. This one makes it sing. This one makes it sadly sing. It's singing while my guitar sadly, uh, gently weeps. That's what it's singing. Is that, does that even have lyrics? I know it's a song with a sad title. And this, that's, that's all I know. <laughs> that, that is the depth of the familiarity I had to invoke that in that reference, unfortunately. George Harrison, right? Okay, cool. I, do I know at least the person who wrote Slash performed it originally? I don't know, maybe. I could have referenced sad songs I know. <laughs> that would have taken an extra 0.1 second to try and recall one of those in my head, so of course I skipped that task. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. I think it's some bacon time for some biscuits and pies. I fear this has not really improved the morale such as I had hoped it would. Don't go to camp, there's no deposits nearby, but I introduced them to the possibility of further pockets up here. Uh, actually, how much stone do I have in hand? I have a lot of stone. Okay, I'm going to start creating some faster paths for our consistently traveled ones. Um, I also really, really do want to actually open the area between these two towns a little bit. Seems like it'd be really helpful. And this could all be simplified muchly. And I think very importantly, with some more stone. All right. I think I will also relent and actually put the plantation down. I just like it being there, okay? Let's give it some farm fields to farm. Stonecutter's camp still has no deposits nearby because I didn't move it. Uh, I mean easiest place to move it to uh, wait where is it there you are the easiest place to move it to would be here in order to get this sea marrow i just struggle to think what i'm going to use that sea marrow for i don't want to just be collecting things in the hopes that i will possibly find a way to utilize them in the future i think that's a a, a way to plan to lose Wait, actually, we gotta replace that human with a beaver and get some humans in the plantation. Come on! I mean, is the most efficient thing I can do here now just cut into another dangerous glade and solve more dangerous glade events? It really feels like it at this point. I didn't even do any archaeology! Tell me where the camp is. Okay, it's right here. There we go. You know what? All woodcutters report. All woodcutters. All hands throwing axes at trees, please. Here's how it's going to go, woodcutters. Get me in there. Get me in there. Let me get in there. Unmark all of this down here. Cover the shame. I changed my mind. And I'll apologize for it. Well, we're running out of coal. I should probably throw a... There we go. Throw a lizard back in the kiln in order to start stacking that back up. Only one, though. I don't need to run out of wood again. 52 float at the moment. Alright. 
Show me an archaeological discovery. Scattered bones barely stick out from beneath the ground. Royal archaeologists are certain that a phenomenal discovery is hidden here. The Queen offers a generous reward for unearthing this ancient skeleton. We have exactly the resources they are asking for. Uh, in return, they will give us salvage of leather planks, vials of pigment, and bundles of fabric, or the excavation, the first stage of the process, the ancient skeleton is unearthed. Time to investigate that. Looks like it's going to be about four minutes worth of a task for him. Ooh! Gain an ancient tablet for every two completed glade events. Added retroactively still. And more fabric or more lizards. Yeah, I'll go for more lizards, I guess. I took deserted caravans very early on, so I shouldn't have built a trading post at any point. That's that's good. Of course, if I hadn't taken deserted caravans, then building a trading post much, 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 much earlier on would have been correct, and suddenly I would have felt really silly that I hadn't already had one. So very, very pleased that isn't the case. Ooh, small half, you are housing enough people. You need to get some fences. Give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Unfortunately, I must berries. As if I do, this small hearth will advance to the next level of being an encampment and give some resolve to the entirety of our civilization here. How y'all doing with the... Yeah, 20% of the way through, fair enough. Popped into encampment immediately, plus two to the global resolve. Love to see it. Got some unhoused beavers again at this point. I would very much like to throw down a couple of houses for y'all. Ooh, we've cleared out some space for that over here as well. Good. Actually, how many beaver houses do I already have? Ten? Bull hockey, I've got ten of these. My population of beavers is 18. If I have 10 beaver homes, and each of them contains two beavers... Wait, it's counting the three that I'm building at the moment. Bingo! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just need to destroy one of- I, I don't need all three of these, I just need two. And human house, we still have- yep, correct amount of them. You know what maybe I should consider? What are you, what are you doing as your specialization bonus here? The You're getting plus 5 to your resolve, but if I put a human in the in that role, don't they have a, a different result? Hang on. I thought each firekeeper of a different type did a different thing as their firekeeper. Like, they had a different kind of, like, passive effect on the entire area. Don't they? I... I... I could have sworn. But it's not showing anything except for I'll get comfortable if I have the lizard next to it. So, sure. Lizard, you do that then. Okay, we're entirely out of flour for the production of that. That would require more provisioners to start working through more roots. There's not that much more of that, so I think at this point we're probably just stopping cooking for a little bit of time. Although, unfortunately, everyone's still hungry. Oh boy. Things are starting to get a bit tougher.
The things I really need to exploit, we uh, have run out of easy access to. So feeding everyone is about to get very, very hard, very, very quickly. I mean, I know the solution to this, don't I? Let's move the woodcutters somewhere else, start trying to cut through to a different dangerous glade and start trying to solve those. Because I still have high tier resources, it's just I don't have low tier resources anymore. I mean, the woodcutters don't still need to be there, so I can still make the, the hedge play here. There we go. So I've got to hedge my bets play, and I've got a continue barreling down the line of archaeological investigations of our terrain play. Uh, okay, archaeological excavation. Work is soon underway to extract and conserve the ancient skeleton. Its secrets will soon be revealed. Uh, we can give you herbs and water skins. That will complete that in four minutes' time. Convert is just the next stage of this progress, or we could take salvage. So again, it's going to take another four minutes, although it's sped up by three times. It's like 80 seconds. I mean, after they actually deliver all of the kit here. And then assumedly there's another stage afterwards. My food isn't super, like, gone yet. But the main reason is because I have a ridiculous amount of berries. But those berries are going to run out. Thankfully, I'm not packing them for provisions anymore. They are lasting a little longer. I don't need that many planks, but I do need some more wood at this point, so I'll untask all of our plank makers. Actually, let me look across some of my... some of my constructed materials here. Yeah, yeah, I, there's no way I need that many uh, scrolls. Like, I'm using all of my pigmentation in order to make scrolls and a lot of my plant fiber, I imagine. Uh, hypothetically. Uh, let's get the weaver to start making some fabric, though, because that fabric will immediately fund our ability to continue making coats, and coats are a very effective way of keeping up some resolve for us here. Oh, hello. Looks like you're a dangerous glade. We've broken on into you and found an ancient burial site. Life from beneath. A rotten matter creeps up from beneath the burial site, spawns six pieces of living matter. Oh, thankfully I've got 20 scrolls, so I can fulfill the educational requirement of this. Disturbing the dead. Woodcutting angers the dead, and hostility will increase by 8 points for every 4 fallen trees. Oh, yeah. We've, uh, we've felled a lot of trees in our time. I'm going to send to the Citadel in order to get one Queen's Grace from completing that. And this large abandoned cache, I do not have enough simple tools just to complete it. But if I did, oh boy howdy, we would just be able to send it to the Citadel, and that would send us to the moon. Three minutes remain on our archaeological excavation. I'm tempted to continue to plan out expansions and things like that. Realistically, <sighs> oh no, high hostility. Why does everyone hate one another so much right now? Oh yes, because we have ridiculously high hostility because of all of the 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 we cut down a bunch of trees at one point. Yeah, I remember doing that. Um, I think I need. Wow, the fire is completely out in this hearth. I need you to start accepting sea marrow because that's a fuel stuff that no one's currently really burning. Good. Um, and then in the main hearth, I'm going to start sacrificing some sea marrow as well. I'm also now going to employ some more people to make coal, considering I'm no longer making planks, so we'll be able to make coal much more efficiently. Everyone's resolve is getting really low. The fire is going out. Everyone's getting really sad. I'm going to increase the amount that we're sacrificing to try and keep people in positive resolve so people don't run away. Oh, God. We're really, really running it close near the end here, eh? I 
I have to sacrifice 33 sea marrow per minute. Can we finish one of these quests and end all of the hostility, please? The scouts are idle in archaeological reconstruction. Ah, here we go. Archaeological reconstruction. A mythical creature is slowly being unearthed. A huge bone... Sorry, huge bones are put together, revealing the full form of the monster that once inhabited the land. We need to input clay. Oh, fabric will do it. Uh, and parts. Fabric and parts. We have the actual ability to complete this. Convert. Modifier. The queen has decided to reward you for your exceptional achievements in science. You receive an additional blueprint choice. We also get three queen's respect and reconstruction. Yes. And it only takes 1.25 minutes. Not 1.25. One minute and 25 seconds. 1.25 would be one minute and 15 seconds. Uh, let's get some coal. Let's stop burning all of the sea marrow that we have. Sure, we can choose another cornerstone if we need. All fuel recipes are faster. There we go. Why not? I say this knowing that we currently have on screen a countdown timer to the video game success. In fact, it's like ridiculously over success as well. We need 14 points of reputation. And by the time we finish this, we will have 16 and a half points of reputation. As it turns out, so much of what I have done here has been needless. Alas. We'll be optimizing our, uh, our build orders consistently over the course of this entire video game. It's the part that I am most excited about, frankly. One minute remains. Noting that, of course, after this, I have all of my meta resources that I still get to spend in order to upgrade slightly the optionality of our future runs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The village's position has been secured. You can now choose to leave or you can continue to play on this map, but any additional deeds won't be completed and you will not earn any more experience or citadel resources. We do get 53 food stockpiles, six artifacts, as well as completed this many deeds. We've got discovered 10 glades, win a game after completing five glade events, win a game on the Scarlet Orchard biome, Win a game on Pioneering Difficulty or higher. Uh, win a game with at least 40 villagers. Big settlement number one. Neat. Um, win a game with vi zero villagers dying. I didn't even expect that had actually occurred there. Win a game with the Royal Outpost modifier as well as with at least 60 villagers. And then Ancient Knowledge. Win a game with at least five ancient tablets in the warehouse. All right. Let's head back to the main map. And I'm going to go to the Smoldering City to, I mean, first cash in all of our deeds here. Oh, hang on. That gave us 50 experience points, which then leveled us up. But the level up also unlocked some stuff, and then I missed what it was because I immediately clicked it. Oops. We got a pipe here, which is a comfort building, an aesthetic building. These are decorations, each of those last two unlocks. And now we're just getting some more experience. New citadel upgrades. We've also unlocked a guild house, a clan hall, a cellar, a metal delivery line, uh, rebellious spirits, and safe haven. Safe haven is a cornerstone, negative 42 hostility for every hub upgraded to the level of neighborhood, and a cornerstone rebellious spirit for gain one global resolve for every two impatience points, and two copper bars a minute from the metal delivery line. But the guild house is a, there we go, a place for fulfilling luxury. The clan hall fulfills brawling and religion, and the cellar produces wine, pickled goods, and jerky, giving us a lot more ability to actually manufacture the goods that people really want to increase their resolve. So maybe uh, I really shouldn't have focused heavily on resolve at the very start there. Anyway, who knows? Ooh! Hell yeah! Big shelter! Essential building! Can accommodate any villager, but won't satisfy the need for series-specific housing. Species specific housing, rather, uh, has to be built near a half. Number of places, six. This is also an essential building. So, this is not a blueprint they're providing us that we'll be able to pick in game. This is something that is just now always going to be available for us 
uh, in the start of any new civilization from here on. Let's look at our upgrades we can buy. I've got six artifacts, so... Unfortunately, I'm not level five. This might be 24... Wow, if I could get these two right now, I would. You can upgrade hubs to the neighborhood level. Neat. I like that. I thought I already had that. And then the next one is you gain a permanent plus five to the storage capacity of all buildings in your settlement. And both of these are plus 2% global boost to your production speed. Incredible. I want those. Deeply and dearly. Allows you to establish trade routes with other nearby settlements. Interesting. You can also pick from one additional option when picking cornerstones. Cornerstones are very, 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 very powerful directionality. Enables advanced controls for what is being consumed in your settlement and by whom in consumption control here, the third level of Obsidian Archive. Okay. I think first things first, I have to get the upgrade to neighborhood levels and I have to get trade routes. And then I only have seven left. I'm just going to hold on to these. I guess I'm also going to be holding on to my six artifacts so that I can possibly just immediately get the Brass Forge level 2 when we become level 5 and come back, hopefully, with enough in our food stockpiles. That said, we'll be making the decision of where indeed we are going to be trying to establish that new settlement at the very start of the next episode. And until then, my name's been Renat Sidney. The name of the game has been Against the Storm. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all of my content of the game past, present, and future. If you do like the series, Especially near the start of a new series, it is very important uh, if you could uh, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Those kinds of things. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see y'all next time.